Do the face masks actually work? I'm most worried about the elderly and children. Who's most at risk? What will happen if I catch a coronavirus? We've been told to wash our hands, but what else can we do to protect ourselves? So that gives you an idea of the kinds of things people want to be answered. Let's start with that last one first, perhaps. How can we protect ourselves? OK, number one is hand hygiene. Good old soap and water. And it's not just a quick dangle under the tap. You've got to get a good lather going. Think about singing two verses of happy birthdays. Loads of guides online to how you should wash your hands. If you're not near soap and water, then you could use some hand sanitizer, but the key here is got to be alcohol based in order to kill the coronavirus. Other thing is, don't when you're out and about touch your, we all do it, your face, nose and eyes, because you can pick up the virus from surfaces and infect yourself that way. So it's getting out of those kinds of habits, coughing uh, into tissues, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, what about face masks? We heard from Danny, the barber there. You have one here. How effective are they? OK, these little paper face masks aren't really much good. They may give a false sense of security. Leave them, I would suggest, to the medical staff because they need to be changed frequently. They are quite good at preventing someone with an infection from passing it on. That's traditionally how they've been used. But those people really now should be staying at home. And that question of who's at risk, are some people more vulnerable than others? Well, anyone can catch it. The good news is young children are really pretty much in the clear on this virus. In fact, um, so far of the reported cases, only two out of 100 have been in people under 20 years of age. Most at risk are the elderly. The older you are, the greater your risk. And those with underlying health problems, things like heart disease, respiratory disease and diabetes. But this is an indiscriminate virus. It can kill young people as well. One of the first to die was a doctor in China who first raised the, the alarm about it, and he was 34. A question from Peter on uh, Twitter right now. How, does the, how long does the virus live on surfaces such as mail, food and packaging? And what's the risk from things like that? OK, you, there's very little evidence um, uh, that there's any risk from getting post from Italy or China where the virus could last there. It can survive on, on hard surfaces for quite a few hours. Deborah's also got in touch. She's on Twitter. She says, is it possible to be a carrier of the virus, but to not actually display the symptoms? Yes, it is. Um, these carriers, and there's quite a lot of reported cases here, they can be potentially shedding the virus and potentially uh, infecting other people. But those who are giving off the most virus are the most sick because, you know, they're coughing and sneezing. And that's why healthcare workers are at particular risk. Hi, I'm Sophie, I'm from Manchester. How can we protect our children from coronavirus and will schools be closing? I'm Chase, I'm from the United States, and I'm wondering if someone is working on a cure for the coronavirus, and if so, how long it'll take to get to us. Well, Fergus, let's talk about children first of all. Are they particularly vulnerable? Should we be closing schools? They don't seem to be particularly vulnerable, but children are very good at spreading germs about, and school closures are always the first thing that public health officials turn to because they tend to bring the bugs home with them and give them to mm -hmm. more vulnerable people. So watch the children in that case. And what about that question about a cure? And perhaps we also want to talk about a vaccine. What treatment, Sean, is there and how close are well, we to this a This is a very new disease. And so at the moment, there are many groups of scientists working on both the production of a vaccine uh, and on which antivirals might be the most effective. Uh, in terms of the vaccine, that takes time. So it won't be for about a year, and that'll be pretty quick if it comes then. So we mustn't rely on a vaccine. In terms of the use of antiviral drugs, they have been used in other viral diseases and work is ongoing at the current time. But again, any new development takes time. And in fact, in some cases, people will get better without any medical treatment Well, 80% of people get better without a, that sort of treatment. Which is important to point out. Um, question from Paul, he says, why have we not set up checkpoints at airports to test for the virus? In some countries, you see those thermal imaging yes. cameras. Well, those thermal imaging cameras aren't necessarily the answer because a recent study found they were about 10% effective in detecting a fever. And the other important factor is that you will have probably been tested at port of exit. You won't have a temperature as you come into the country. So it's much more effective to have the system that we have, which is flights from high risk areas are met and give people are given information about 111 and self-isolation. 
And a question here on social distancing from Claire on Twitter. She asks, should I be wearing gloves when I go out or I'm around other people? Well, gloves might help and unless you then suddenly touch your face. You'll be passing on maybe a whole load of germs that way. Um, really, social distancing. We maybe ought to start thinking about not shaking hands anymore. The French have advised the French citizens not to kiss on the cheek, mm -hmm. so maybe mm -hmm. we should all be careful mm -hmm. about who we kiss. And my friend from China said to do this yeah. rather than anything bump. with the elbow bump. Yeah. <laughs> New ways of social interaction <laughs> in that case. Yes, don't um, do too hard. <laughs> we've had so many questions in, so let's try and fly through a few more. Lots of people are asking about whether you're more susceptible if you have asthma or HIV. What do we know about that and people with suppressed immune systems? Fans? OK, so suppressed immune systems, definitely asthma, yes. No uh, knowledge of whether people with HIV are at any greater risk. And Sean, this one, this is from Sai on Twitter. He says, how do I tell the difference between a common cold and coronavirus? Uh, through the test, probably, unless your symptoms go on to develop into uh, chest disease and, and then you're more likely to have coronavirus. But a sniffle isn't normally associated with coronavirus. Are the symptoms a little bit more specific? Uh, the, the symptoms tend to be fever, shortness of breath uh, and, and a cough. Uh, so, and a cold may not, uh, will probably have a brunnier nose than that. Okay. But it's not foolproof and that's why the tests are being done. Um, there's a whole lot of testing being done through GPs and hospitals at the moment by Public Health England to see if we're missing any cases.